Hey guys, it's me, Mr. 250, and welcome back to Sound of Drop Fallen to Poison. Since I was heavily, heavily underestimated how long last time would take, I'm not really going to make any promises this time. Let's just see how far we can get. So anyway, we're going to continue from our last save, which I'm going to be following the guide on the Steam Workshop, which you can't currently see right now. Well, not Steam Workshop, on the Steam Guides. To help us get the Himeno ending, if I'm remembering that correctly. Alright, so just as a reminder of what's going to be happening, we take the common route through a lot of this, which uh, I believe, because I'm seeing one of the last options in the common route is use its sense of hearing. I remember that had to do with the killer whales. And then our next thing is choose either option, then we can go to the Himeno route. So basically everything's going to be very similar until we get to that point. Okay, so oddly enough, I think this is where the routes actually change, like where things matter. So we've got uh, we've got two choices here. We have save Himeno or save Mari. Interestingly enough, the Himeno route tells us that we have to save Mari. And the Princess of Drops, which I know we save Mari in, has this, has, we have to say I have to save Himeno. Which is really weird to me. But we're going to go with it. So I have to save Mari. Now I know I picked that at some point. So a lot of this seems very, very much the same. It must just sort of be like one of those flags you set off and then later it makes a difference. So, yeah, I mean, this all seems very the same. We're still heading to the deep sea fish booth. And I have no doubts. Okay, okay, so just so everyone knows what happens, I'll show a little bit of the footage of uh, me skipping through it so you can kind of get an idea, but everything basically happened the same. Discount the part where, like, basically we we defeated the evil the Saganu Mariko who was taking over Himeno, and our sister, everything, everything happened the same. And so it was Himeno and I trying to escape, and then we had that moment where we were like, oh no, I really hated you, you know, and then all that and stuff. And then we decided to put aside our differences and leave together. That was all the same. This seems to be the only difference so far. A quiet rain. Pitter, pat, pitter, pat. The drops make a small sound as they land on the girl's umbrella. The droplets of water bursting open mixes with the scent of the trees lining the street and the asphalt, making Himeno, who is taking deep breaths, aware of the smell of rain. She had thought it would be a good idea to come on a day that there was no club, but today just happens to be a rainy day. Since it would have been a simple training and meeting, Himeno would have been done and heading home within an hour. Turning down her clubmate's invitation, Himeno headed for Manton on her own. She has plans with Mayu again this weekend, so today is her only chance to come alone. In order to distinguish herself, to take actions as Mayu's best friend, Himeno finds a flower shop she read about in a magazine, and closing her umbrella, heads inside. There are several flowers reminiscent of the summer season. Cute, yellow, safflowers, and... Hydrangeas, adorned with the melancholic color of rain. Even though Himeno enjoys visiting different shops, she has little experience with buying flowers. I'm pretty sure this ending's going to be sad because there's rain. And rain is always sad in anime. It never rains on a happy day. <laughs> with such a sweet smell wafting through the small store, Himeno decides to come here again with Mayu. Um, I have a question about these flowers. Having finished her shopping, Himeno once again walks through the rainy mountain. Her destination is none other than Mantin East Building. As she had thoroughly checked the map yesterday, she is able to reach her destination without issue. Heading through the lobby that is crowded whether it's raining or not, Himeno rides the elevator. Mantin quickly shrinks away from Himeno's sight. 
going through the entrance, Himino buys a student ticket. The lady at the reception desk is the same one that was there yesterday, with her dark brown hair pulled back in a bun. Her lips, lightly painted with pink lipstick, form a smile, and she asks, You came yesterday as well, didn't you? You're alone today? Seeing a junior high schooler alone is probably a rarity. Himino is pleased that the lady remembers her face. Yes, it was really fun, so I'm here again today. Thank you so much. Well then, please enjoy your visit. Of course. Returning the lady's smile, Himino politely declines the year-long pass the lady has offered her. Visiting more than three times in one year earns a free visit, but it would be better to get the year-long pass when Mayu is with her. Himino passes her ticket through the ticket gate and once again enters Manton Aquarium. As it's already evening, most of the customers are adults, particularly couples. How nice. A boyfriend says, I'm sorry, to his girlfriend after being over an hour late due to working overtime. Although this has left her in a foul mood, as they walk around the aquarium, the smile slowly overtakes her whole face. Finally, they end their day at a restaurant with a view of the town, clinking their wine glasses. While aspiring to such an adult romance, Himeno sighs at the notion of having no such prospects in the present. Of course, after staring into the tanks for a while, one loses awareness of the other customers. Manton Aquarium is one little universe that Himeno is familiar with. After taking a brief look around, Himeno leaves the aquarium. Though Himeno thinks she'll head on after a meal at the cafe on the second floor, she ends up having reservations about going in alone and, distracted by her hunger, gets a smoothie made from dark leafy greens from the juice bar. Once again riding the elevator, she heads for Manton Aquarium. The night sky visible from the elevator reminds her of another starry, starry sky. Huh. It's just nothing but the cosmos. Putting the name Manton to shame, Himeno sees the starry sky in various places. In the aquarium in the night sky, even in golden nail polish and in aromatherapy candles. But the real vastness of the starry sky is something Himeno still doesn't know. However, Himeno isn't worried about such a thing. Each day spent with her best friend Sparkles, and Himeno now knows how precious that is from the bottom of her heart. Uh, I forgot something. <laughs> Manton Aquarium is now closing. All of the customers are heading for the elevator. Heading for the lady who is about to close the reception area shutter, Himeno calls out to her with a, pain, with a pained smile. It's the same lady with the dark brown hair. I'll come right back, so may I please go get it? You forgot something? Half of the lights have been turned out. Shall I accompany you? N no, that's alright. I'm coming here tomorrow as well. Ah, I see. Well then, we're closing up, so please hurry back. Himeno quickly passes through the ticket gate, exits the Fish of Tokyo Bay booth, and heads for the tunnel tank. Just as the lady said, the inside is much darker than it was in the middle of the day. I'm here. Himeno stands at the center of the tunnel tank and rests her hand on the glass on the tank glass. It isn't as if there's anyone else around, but Himeno looks up and speaks in a gentle voice. You probably can't hear me anymore, but I have something I think I should say. Mari-chan. In the blink of an eye, Himeno is brought to tears, her voice shaking. It's my fault Mayu had to face something so scary. I didn't know anything about her past. I hadn't even tried to... Even though I talked so much about Ghost and all, I could have never imagined. Himeno leans on the tank, looking down. If she doesn't, her body will give out completely. It seems as if the strength to hold up her body is leaving in turn with her overflowing emotions. Since you were there, Mari-chan, 
We were able to come back. I was able to make it out without losing something precious to me. As she says this, Himeno pulls a flower from a shopping bag. It's a blue rose. It's only one, but it holds my feelings. Leaving flowers here would of course be in the way of others, but she at least wants to get her feelings across. So just one flower. Thank you so very much, Mari-chan. Somehow rest in peace. I guess she was kind of responsible for them getting out alive. Well, as alive as you can get after being stuck in a spooky fish aquarium. Her words serve to accompany the flowers. Then Himeno puts her hands together. It's probably only several seconds that pass in real time. However, time is not the problem. For Himeno, it is the depth of what fills that time. Of her very precious sentiment. Okay, I'll probably get in trouble. Himeno wipes away the tears that have gathered at the corner of her eyes and jogs towards the exit. She never hears any sort of reply. Therefore, this is probably nothing more than her satisfying herself. However, this is Himeno's farewell. And her decision. A farewell to her best friend's little sister. And a resolution to properly watch over Mayu and to support her. Saying thank you to the lady at the reception desk, Himino heads for the elevator once more. Someday we'll... Grateful that she is alone in the elevator, Himino gazes up at the nightscape and murmurs, Tomorrow, life will go on as it always has. However, for Himino, she'll begin to move forward just a bit each day. Well, that's that. From what I heard, I was looking into it. The Princess of Drops, the one we got before this, was the, quote, true ending. While this is the... It's another true ending, so to speak, but it's the, um... It was the, you know, it was just the, like, normal ending, if that makes sense. Like, the other one was the good ending, this one was the normal ending. That's how it used to be. There used to be two endings. But since the Steam release, there's two more endings, I've been told, because of this uh, New Game Plus stuff. And that's what I'm going to go for now. Um, I've been told just by a friend of mine who actually recommended the game to me. Well, not recommended, I should say, but they were talking about it for a bit and got me into playing it. That uh, apparently one of the endings has like some really weird translation errors going on. So look forward to that. But that's what I'm going to be heading for next. Now, I do want to point out, I'm going to take a quick look at this to make sure nothing looks really weird. Alright, so I'm looking, I'm looking at everything, right? The literal only thing that determines your ending is deciding if you want to save Mari or save Himeno. If you decide to save Himeno, you get Princess of Drops, which is the, you know, good ending we already got. If you decide to save Mari, you get the Himeno ending, which is this kind of melancholic one. Why? <laughs> I'm just saying. That's, that, is, that is the only difference between the two routes. There's nothing different. Feels a little bit less than straightforward, doesn't it? <laughs> just a little bit. Anyway. So now we are going to go for the other two endings. All right, so, okay, so I'm starting to see what's going on here. So, this is where the New Game Plus routes seem to diverge from the main route. The only way to get out of this without a bad ending was to kick about frantically before. If you tried anything else, if you tried calling out frantically, that didn't work. Cut you down to kick out, kick about frantically or shake off his hand. So calling out didn't do a lot before. Like, you just basically ended up with bad endings if you did anything but kick about frantically. So, let's try uh, calling out frantically then. Which is apparently going to have a slightly different ability here. Even so, call out his name. Now this led to two choices before. Which was Shinji and Kanji. And I was, I was like, that's not his name, right? 
Well, apparently the New Game Plus route gives you the option to call him by his actual name, Kenji. Which um, I'm reading on the guide, this choice is only unlocked if you saw the Miku opening on this playthrough. Saves from a first playthrough will not have this option. There we go. Kenji-san. Having been called out by his name, the hand reaching towards me slowly lowers. That's different, right? Yeah. Though the hand clutching my leg does not loosen, it is correct to say that he stopped. Kenji-san. It's all right now. I'm looking right at you. So the difference is that we bothered to remember his name. What a scumbag. For some time, the serene period continues to permeate my entire being. Unable to relieve the tension, I stare at the suspended Hiyoshi-san. Is that so, big sis? Suddenly the voice passes through my ba brain, piercing the silence. Then it just as suddenly cuts off. What? Yeah, this is all still new stuff. This is exciting. That you, Mayu-chan? Kinji-san, huh? Just now, for a second, Mari's voice, I started to say, then shut my mouth. I get the feeling that her voice has reverberated down this passageway. But Mari is nowhere in sight. Maybe it's just an auditory hallucination like the one from when we came in. A refreshed expression appears on Hiyoshi San's face, as if a demon has been expelled from his body. Mayu Chan, I. What on earth? You don't remember anything? Don't remember. Remember what? Nothing. You just acted funny for a bit. Just a little funny. <laughs> he tried to eat me. Relieved that his voice has returned to normal. I tell him what happened over the last several minutes. Of course, I take the edge off of some of the frightening things Hiyoshi san had blurted out. It isn't that I still don't feel wary about him, but at any rate, what had happened wasn't the norm. I come to an agreement with myself that the version of him I had saved is a separate person. Speaking of saving, let's make a save here just so, in case I need to come back to that, I can. What are you saying? Anyway, sorry wouldn't be enough. Mayu-chan, I've hurt you, haven't I? Well, um... I'm sorry, I really am. So sorry. All he can do now is apologize. No, that's not... Hmm? Could you... L let go of my leg? Uh, oh, <laughs> Sorry, I completely forgot. You know, I was just thinking, without these extra New Game Plus routes, Kinji's role in the story is pretty much to save you at that one point, and then just to be a scary guy. That, that's it. He pretty much does nothing else. He greets you at the beginning, and that's about it. Arching his eyebrows upwards, Hiyoshi-san releases my leg. He probably stayed unaware of it because of concentrating on what I was telling him he had done. I thought him a light-hearted person, but he is definitely earnestly taking in what he had done. Watching him as he bites down on his bottom lip so hard it bleeds, I decide to believe in his honest nature. I take a breath and rise to my feet, calling out to him as he remains with his head down. Are you alright now? My body still feels stiff. Do you think... You can stand. Somehow, yeah. Oof. Resting his hands on his knees, he pulls his large body up. Up. Uh, huh? Again? Yeah. A girl's voice echoes in my mind. A voice that whispered to me here in this aquarium. My little sister's voice. You know what the other sad thing is, too, is that Kinji got taken over by the evil spirits, but... I don't think he himself is evil, so we pretty much kicked him in the face and left him to die with the world or whatever. Now that's sad. <laughs> Almost in time with my frustration, Hiyoshi-san grimaces once again. Crap, my head. Hiyoshi-san! I have no time to worry about Mari. Having stood up almost halfway, Hiyoshi-san crumples as if his strings had been cut. 
tumbling onto the floor of the passageway. I rush over to him, grabbing him by the shoulders instinctively. Don't worry. Huh? It's not unthinkable that I might revert to the way I was earlier, right? If I do, leave me. Go on. Well, I guess it's what he would have wanted. But... You don't need to worry. I'll be fine. Crawling across the floor, Hiyoshi-san rests himself against a wall. Gripping his head with one large hand, he turns to me with a pained expression. He's sweating profusely and struggling for air, taking deep breaths. Despite the state he's in, the corners of his mouth twitch up with a... <laughs> Aren't you going to look for your friend? I'll follow you later on, so just go. But, but, go! His bellow drowns out even my own breathing, reverberating down the passageway. For some time after he closes his mouth, the air seems to quiver. However, I do not find him or his sudden out outburst frightening. Yoshi-san! It hurts that I caused you pain, Mayu-chan. You don't need to worry. If I rest a bit, I'll be fine, so... I understand. Are you sure? On my own, it's been nothing but frightening experiences. As he closes his eyes, he gives me a thumbs up. His haggard breathing continues as he deals with his own impending madness. He's trying to tough it out so that he doesn't hurt me again, creating puddles of sweat on the floor. He's seriously worried about me. Therefore, I also need to seriously trust in him. No matter how many times I want to look back, I fight off the impulse and, at a quick pace I'm not used to, I put the passageway behind me. So we didn't leave the room with, uh, with Hiyoshi still like, ah, on the floor and, you know, after kicking him in the face, so he's arguably better, but he seems to be in pain from something. As soon as the door is between us, I put my ear against it and listen to the sounds in the passageway I just left. However, it is only my own violent pulse and not Hiyoshi-san's breathing that I can hear. He was in a strange state. My mother had once had a high fever, but Hiyoshi-san seemed like he was suffering even more than that. You know, I bet now that, you know, we haven't kicked him in the face, he's going to end up coming back later. And like, I don't know, helping us or doing something. In spite of the circumstances, he had pushed me to go. Since I was worried about Himeno, he was giving my situation priority. I'll come back, no matter what. I muttered to no one in particular. That's right. This is... Okay, now is this different? Ah, no, this is, yep, this is all the same. So I have a feeling that that was a good area of divergence. That was the main area of divergence, I should say. And then it'll come back later. So let's skip forward through a bit until we figure out what we can do. So apparently for the New Game Plus op uh, route, I'm noticing it says choose either option. So I guess saving Himeno or Mari doesn't matter in this. Oh, hey. Oh, wow. Okay, I wasn't expecting something here. So apparently this is where things start to change. Oh, this is exciting. Okay, so as a bit of recap, we just got done with going through the jellyfish tank again and having the spooky heads over there. Um, then we left the jellyfish tank. We saw Saginaw Eko and whatever Sayo's name is. I don't know, Sayo-chan, Sayo that's what I usually think of her as. And apparently, you know, that choice doesn't matter. She still gets her head beaten to the wall. I don't know if she's dead yet. And we're in, uh, but this apparently is different. Kenji says above you, Mayu-chan. Huh? That voice. What breaks through my bewilderment is something reminiscent of a man's voice. Looking up, I breathe a sigh of relief at the words piercing through as I am lifted up in sync with the voice bellowing, let's go. The sensation is different from floating, more like my body is being pushed up. 
I hear the voice from below say, oof, just as I'm about to hit the ceiling, and I place my hands against it. There should be a handle above you. If you pull that, a ladder will come out. <sighs> right. I look down to give my reply and finally confirm the voice's owner. He's got a firm grip on the left and right side of my hips, raising me several meters in the air. It gives me the stable feeling of a father sitting on sitting a child on his shoulders, not letting me slip. Kinji-san! It's fine, just open the door. All right. From there, you can pass through the passageway above and go to the other side of the tank. I got it. If you don't hurry, that girl will die. Right. See, this is why you, you can't just kick people in the face and you gotta remember their names. I slide my hands across the ceiling, searching for any bumps or grooves. I find something sooner than I expected and give a good pull on that bump. With a clatter, the ladder on the other side of the door swings down, and I reach for it before it drops all the way. I've got this. Alright, I'll be there in a bit. Inside the ceiling, there's a passageway I have to crouch down to walk through. To the left and right of me are machines with meters attached. Surely they regulate the booth below. After 10 meters, I've come far enough to have passed the barrier between myself and the two girls. Still bent over, I quickly move on and push open the door at my feet.